Welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel. In this video, we're going to talk about how you can become a better dungeon master by playing D&D by yourself, or solo D&D as it's often called. So this is not a new subject. In 1975, I believe it was, when Strategic Review number one came out, there were rules in there for playing Dungeons and Dragons, at least the dungeon adventures, solo. It's implied that you the rules themselves are already handled playing wilderness travel solo, and I'm guessing that is based on using wilderness survival, but this is not a video about that. <laughs> if you're interested in that, let me know. And you might say, well, yeah, but that's for the players, right? And yes, it is. However, as a DM, we encounter certain problems, we'll call them, that have to be overcome. And one of those is that building an adventure can be tricky to know like how to, and oh, I know this is a a word people don't like, but how to balance things? How do we know how things are going to play out? Is that too many goblins in the room? Is that too much treasure? Is it taking too long? Are there too many traps? Is this dungeon working, right? <laughs> and and I've seen many people say, well, you know, you fudge the dice or make changes in the middle of encounters because of the fact that nothing's really played test, right? Your first players going through it are the play testers. Well, if you run the dungeon yourself or you play the dungeon yourself, you will have play tested it and you'll have a better idea. This doesn't mean that you should necessarily make every encounter when you play test it through, oh, that was too tough, let me make it weaker. But it does mean you're going to understand that when your party goes into the room and there's 25 goblins, that's probably too much. So you can telegraph it and make sure that they're very much aware of this so players can make informed decisions. So what other advantages do we have? One thing is this will help you come up with adventure ideas. If we, if we map out and create dungeons ourselves, we may roll up a cool magic item, let's say, on level two of the dungeon. And now that creates a rumor that you can use back in town or a quest if you're doing a one shot. This is a way just to kind of create the dungeon organically and see where those things appear. As I mentioned, it's really useful to have test play encounters, right? Test play the balance of the encounters. Now, obviously, your players are going to do different things than the standard moves. But at the same time, you can get an idea of whether or not an encounter is going to be overwhelming to your party or not. These tools can help you stock or restock a dungeon, as well as help you build the world in general if you use some of the more uh, story-based solo RPG techniques. My earliest experience with running D&D solo was with Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 1st Edition. In the back of the Dungeon Master's Guide, there's a section for random dungeon generation, and it says you can use this to play solo. And now I look back on it and think it's kind of silly, but when we were kids, we never just made a fifth level character. What we would do in our downtime, you know, when we're at home and we after we finish our homework and we're not allowed to go out because it's dark out, <laughs> remember those days? Um, you know, we would sit down and we would run parties of adventurers that we would create through solo dungeons to level them up. And this effectively made a backstory for our characters, right? Because if I take a, if I roll up an adventuring party of six or eight characters, I run them through a dungeon, a bunch of them die, two or three get out, they've got some treasure, they've got some magic items. Now I have a second or third level party that I can, or characters, the one I like. I can bring to my friend's house when he's running a game and say, here's my third level character. And because we trusted each other or whatever, I guess, we never really questioned it. And it was just a really fun way to make a character. Now, again, I'm talking to DMs here, so this could be a great way to build an NPC party, right? If you want to build some NPCs, you could make a party of six or eight characters, run them through several dungeons until they get close to or possibly above the level of the current player characters in your campaign. This can now be an NPC group that actually has a story. When the player characters start talking to them, it's not, hmm, would they have known, seen a bugbear? You'll know if they saw a bugbear. You'll know what they actually did in the dungeon, how they got to where they were. They weren't just some character you made up. They were something that actually existed in the world. And if they, one, one of them escaped a dungeon and there's a bunch more treasure at the bottom, they left behind their, their you know, companions who were being slaughtered by the, the, the dragon or whatever, they know it's there, right? This, again, could be another adventure hook for the party. Go back with me, party of adventurers. I will show you the way because I have a map through most of this dungeon. And when we get down to this third level, know that there is a, an ogre down there and we need to defeat it. This is a great way to bring people into the adventures. It's a, it allows you to effectively make an adventure whole cloth. This is a great way to make adventure hooks. There's lots of quest generators and things like that online. But by doing this, you can actually create the quest giver and have their story. Playing solo is also a great way to master or get better at some of the procedures that go into older games like OSC and BX. Maybe you're used to playing other games, so you, you forget to roll uh, you know, random monsters every X number of uh, turns that they're traveling. You forget to mark off distance. You forget to map because 
you know, you're new to the system. This is going to allow you to do it and not feel, I don't want to say rushed, but you know, when you're playing with your friends, you just want to get to playing, right? And maybe that seems boring because especially when you're slow at it, but when you become fast at it, you get used to tracking time, handling reaction roles, using the, the combat sequences, you will become more and more proficient in it, for lack of a better word. And this will allow you to be a better dungeon master just effectively. Now, this is also true if you're running other games like 5e. It's going to allow you to test different abilities of, of different classes, to test out spells, right? If you have copies of the character sheets of your players, you can actually run those characters through a dungeon to see if their spells and stuff are just going to make this dungeon boring or if it's going to make it too hard or it's not going to be the way you want it to feel. We want to shape our adventures around our players when we're a dungeon master in a long-term campaign. And this is a great way to do it because we'll actually have a chance to play the game before the players sit down at the table. And solo play is not just great for creating adventures on your own, your own adventures, but it's also great for running through pre-made adventures, right? You could either take stats, the exact stats of the players you have in your group and run them through. Maybe they're on third level now and you want to run this fifth level adventure in a month or so. So you get their characters, you bump them up to fifth level, right? And then you run them through this adventure to see, is this going to work out for you? And maybe you should wait till sixth level, or maybe you should run it at fourth level because that's the projection that you think you might have with your group. It will allow you to stay ahead a little bit. And again, it can be really fun to actually see the, the players now enter these dungeons that you've played through and usually do way better than you did. Let's be honest. As I mentioned, there's lots of ways that you can do solo play. Some of it is more mechanical, kind of what I was just talking about. Some of it is more journal style. And this is great for building stories. You could set your solo games 100 years or 1,000 years before the PCs are going to be adventuring in your campaign and have various groups of adventurers travel around through the wilderness, thus marking settlements. You can find dungeons and, and dig down into them and make the dungeons ahead of time. And all this stuff can be created in kind of a really fun way because you're you're playing D&D. I would love to hear from you guys and know if you have ever played solo, if you're interested in playing solo, if you'd like to see videos on how the mechanics work. If you want me to run through some solo adventures here, let me know. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, ring the bell so you get notifications. I'd appreciate if you share the video around so we can grow the channel, get these videos in front of more people. And let me know in the comments below what else you'd like to see on this channel. And I'll see you next time.